What is going on everybody? How is everybody doing today? Welcome back here today to a reaction to the annual NBA app GM survey. So I am a little bit late to the party here. I meant to upload this a little bit ago. It did come out on October 4th, so it's been about a week now. Personally, I haven't gotten this spoiled for me yet, but if you have already seen this article or read it yourself, you could just kind of see how I react to it. So basically, John uh, Schumann, uh, sh yeah, I'm just going to say it like that, but John of NBA.com uh, runs a survey, I'm sure with other kind of reporters and analysts over at NBA or on the NBA side of things. And they they asked a bunch of GM or they asked GMs around the NBA a bunch of questions. I believe there's also executives in here as well, which could probably range from like head scouts to presidents of something or just kind of player development side of things. Just a lot of front office guys in the league to get a whole lot like league wide consensus on who the top player is at this position, who's going to win this award, etc. So, yeah, if you guys do enjoy this, feel free to drop a thumbs up and yeah, let's hop right into this. So, the first uh, I guess thing they have here is which team will win the 2023 NBA Finals and most executives or GMs said the Milwaukee Bucks then the Warriors Clippers Celtics that is the top four now wow Cleveland comes in at number six um, or no wait this is for the Eastern Conference excuse me but yeah so we could just go and tackle the uh, finals thing I don't think that's too surprising I think the Bucks and the Warriors got to be up there Bucks in my opinion have the best player in the league in Giannis Warriors are the reigning champions and still are in prime position to make a run this year bearing any everything goes right with J1 Green and then there's no just kind of uh, chemistry malfunctions and explosions even more throughout the year Clippers yeah with Paul George Kawhi Kawhi coming back John Wall there um, and then Boston they were in the Eastern Conference Finals or excuse me the NBA Finals last year uh, the Eastern Conference champion so they predict that the Eastern Conference is going to go Milwaukee Boston Philly Brooklyn Miami Cleveland I guess it is a little bit like Brooklyn is a wild card because they could win it all this year or they can implode and maybe not even make the playoffs. So four is a little bit high for me. I'd probably put them at five or six. I do like Miami and maybe even Cleveland ahead of them as well. But honestly, fully healthy, you put Cleveland up against Brooklyn, it's probably hard to take Cleveland, really. Like you're going to be signed with Brooklyn if Katie and Kyrie and Ben Simmons are all playing. I do think Philly might have a better regular season than the Boston Celtics or even the Milwaukee Bucks, but who I think is going to win the Eastern Conference. I predicted Milwaukee if you did watch my prediction video. Uh, so yeah, they don't really have six, seven, eight, but they have a bunch here for um, the West, I guess, because yeah, like Minnesota is projected to finish third and then Lakers and New Orleans fourth. But yeah, for the Western Conference side, Clippers as the one seed. I had the Clippers in the finals, but I didn't have them as my one seed throughout the regular season. I think there'll be a little bit of load management. Golden State at number two, Phoenix at three. They're a wild card this year. I think they could see some regression. Denver at four. I'm not as high on Denver as some other people. I think they're going to finish around six or seven because, I don't know, it might be a rehab year for Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr., but they do have the best regular season play over the last two years in Nikola Jokic. Memphis at five. They were my prediction to be the one seed. A lot of people weren't a big fan of that just because of Jaron Jackson Jr.'s injury. I just think, like, Memphis is just so deep, and I feel like they play every game like it's a playoff game, at least throughout the regular season. They've shown that they could win with John Morant hurt as well. So I think that they're a team that could end, would be the one seed. And they were, what, the two seed last year? So I don't think that would be too surprising at all. Or were they the three seed? They might have been the... Th no, they were the two seed. They were the two seed, yeah. Uh, and then you got Dallas at six. They, like, Luka misses any bit of time this year. And I don't think they make the playoffs at all. Like, they're going to be a playing tournament team or very close to, in my opinion. Minnesota, I think I like them more than Dallas, but then again, they have Luka Doncic. Lakers got 10% of the votes to be the fourth seed. I mean, you get a healthy LeBron and AD. It's not crazy. And then New Orleans, man, the West is loaded. The West is absolutely loaded. But yeah, going back here, like the Nets uh, were picked 72% out of um, the GMs to win it all last year. So, hey. These don't work out. So now we're going into the player side of things. Who will win the 2022-2023 MVP? Most GMs said Luka, then Giannis, Embiid, and then Curry last year. KD was the favorite. That was my pick last year. This year, my pick was Joel Embiid. Uh, Luka, I think, could have maybe the best statistical season. But like I said, like the Dallas Mavericks might not even be a top five seed. And that's like my thing with MVP. You should be at least a top four team record-wise in the league. So we'll see where that happens. Giannis is definitely a favorite, but... um. Well, yeah, like they're, the Bucks are going to be good. He's going to be up there. It's just like the fatigue, but he didn't win last year. You can see there's not even Nikola Jokic here. 
it's the, I guess, voter fatigue, but he did win two in a row. If you were starting a franchise today and could sign any player in the NBA, who would it be? Giannis won Luka two. Yeah, 100%. I'm surprised Luka was ahead of Giannis last year. I would still go Giannis one, Luka two. I mean, Luka is a few years younger than Giannis, but Giannis has proven both sides of the floor. I mean, proven that you could win a championship with him. I mean, I, I think we can all agree that you could win a championship with Luka as your best player. Just the Mavericks really haven't built a championship caliber roster around him since his time coming into the league but yeah i would do one Giannis, two luka three Jokic, and then it's kind of a toss-up at four because then you're going into like Embiid, curry but they're a little bit on the older side you look into like zion um ja jason tatum when Yama, who's not even in the league which player forces opposing coaches to make the most adjustments? Curry at one. Giannis, at I feel like, yeah, Curry at one is a given. He was the number one favorite last year, and I guess winning him all or winning it all gets him 25% more of the votes. Giannis, uh, Jokic, and Embiid. Or Giannis and Jokic are tied for second. Embiid and Luka tied for fourth. And then KD and Ja received votes. I'm surprised that KD maybe was ahead of like maybe Embiid, and I'm surprised Luca was it maybe a little bit higher as well. Which player is most likely to have a breakout season in 2023? Evan Mobley, number one. So a lot of guys that were drafted last year, at least Caden Mobley. Okay, I mean, I love Evan Mobley. We'll see if his scoring can really break out now that they added Donovan Mitchell, a 25-point-per-game scorer. Cade Cunningham, I, I don't know if I love Cade this year. I mean, I do like Cade a lot. Okay, Anthony Edwards. Yeah, uh, we'll see if go. Bear affects his style of play this year. I mean, it shouldn't. Uh, I guess it doesn't help out with his spacing, but I think he's going to be on the floor with Cat more, and it's going to be more Gobert and D'Lo. They're going to stagger those minutes. Um, Zion at four, and then a bunch of guys receiving votes. I know Tyrese Maxey would be a popular pick. Tyrese Halliburton. Shout out to the Tyrese's. We'll see what Franz Wagner can do. We'll see a little bit of Anthony Simons. And Triple J was the number one pick last year at 17%. Uh, who is the best point guard in the NBA? Curry won, Luka two, uh, Chris Paul three, Trey on four. I'm good with that. I, I think... That's pretty much in order. I think you can maybe make an argument for Trey and Ja above Chris Paul, just seeing on the way he's going throughout his career or like at the end of his career last year. But I am pretty cool with that. I don't think it'll look like that at the end of the year. I'm sure Ja and Trey will probably pass Chris Paul. We'll see how Kyrie plays this year. Hopefully going to be playing most of the games because um, there won't be a vaccine requirement. And then uh, Damian Lillard's going to be fully healthy again. So there is going to be a lot of parody or controversy, I think, in the point guard rankings. Best shooting guard. Okay, so we don't know what position Luka is. I would say he's like a point guard. Yeah, I mean, like, he's the highest usage guy. He's going to be bringing the ball, running it through him. He, he's a point guard at this point. Like, maybe if you wanted to say Brunson was the point guard, he was the shooting guard. Sure, but I don't know. Like, even Dinwiddie is maybe more of a point. I don't know. I think I think Luka's a point guard. So, they have Booker 1, Luka 2. Why is Steph considered a shooting guard? they saying, like, Jordan Poole is the point guard when he's out there. Um, Okay, Harden was number one last year. So, I'm surprised Harden... Well, I'm taking Luka and Curry over Harden. But why is Tatum receiving votes? I, okay, yeah. It's so weird now with, like, how the NBA is. I just think... Yeah, now my head hurts. Like, you'd probably say Harden's a point guard now, and Maxie's the shooting guard. All right, so if you take out Luka and Curry, because you put them in point guards, like, you definitely have Bradley Beal, Zach Levine, Donovan Mitchell all up there as well, Jalen Brown. Who is the best small forward in the NBA? KD's number one. I agree. Tatum, two. Luka is just every position. Uh, LeBron, basically three, but four, yeah. And then Kawhi, five. Okay, we'll see where Kawhi maybe finishes up. Um, or is this going to be more of a rehab year for him? Who's the best power forward? Pretty easy. Giannis, one. LeBron, two. KD, three. I would consider those guys. I mean, I would definitely consider LeBron more of a small forward still. And then KD, I would maybe can consider a power forward. I guess it's just where Ben Simmons plays for them. And who's the best center? Jokic, one. And B, two. Giannis three, but take out Giannis. It's a pretty much a debate, or it's like it's up for grabs. The third spot between Cat, Bam, and Gobert. In my opinion, I'd probably do Cat, Bam, Gobert, but it it could uh, vary between who you're asking. Highest percentage of total votes on position questions. Okay, yeah. Which team made the best overall moves this offseason? Cavs one acquiring Donovan Mitchell. Uh, Minnesota two acquiring Rudy Gobert. Philly uh, also tied up there, getting guys like PJ Tucker, D'Anthony Melton, and then the Jazz are up there. I honestly think for the future, like I love what the Jazz did this offseason. They acquired so many assets and picks for their guys. I mean, I just love, love, love that Gobert trade for them. Uh, and I think they're going to really win that trade. Um, or I don't think, like, I'm not saying they're going to, Okay, I didn't mean to say that they're going to be the winner because it's going to work out for Minnesota. I just think like they really set themselves up good for the next decade. And then Boston and Sacramento receiving votes. I liked what Boston did. It sucks that Gallo got hurt, but I, I really loved the additions of him at the time. And uh, Malcolm Brogdon, which one player acquisition uh, will make the biggest impact? Mitchell, Gobert, Brunson, Tucker. Wow, Tucker at four. That is pretty 
interesting. I think he will make a like a like a big impact. I'm excited to see that Brunson's three. And yeah, Gobert two, Mitchell one. That makes sense. What was the most underrated player acquisition? Brogdon one. Yeah, you don't really see that getting a lot of buzz. And Brogdon's still a good player. PJ Tucker two, tied with John Wall, two former Rockets. Melton four. You know I love that addition. If you watched my top five players, I love for next year. Bojan Bogdanovic going to Detroit. I do like that for them as well. Yeah, surprised to see no Dejounte Murray up here as well. Like the Hawks didn't get many votes, or they didn't even get into the uh, other teams receiving votes okay uh which team will be most improved in 2021 22 i guess that is a typo clippers won yeah i mean they went from wait the clippers didn't make the playoffs last year right no yeah the clippers didn't make the playoffs so okay yeah um, uh, that makes sense Cavs, and then you got pelicans and then minnesota detroit wow people thinking maybe detroit's gonna take a jump this year uh like i wonder who's gonna have the best record out of these three teams probably be between portland and sacramento it will be interesting who was the more surprising move or was the most surprising move of the offseason go bear to minnesota i would say so especially for the package he went for <laughs> andre Drummond to chicago got three percent of the votes and then yeah russ last year deservingly so got most of the votes rookies and international who won the uh, rookie of the year award paulo then keegan then jabari smith most people said Jalen Green last year and it ended up going to Scotty Barnes. You know, I still think Evan Mobley should have won it. Ben Carroll, yeah, that's my pick. It, it makes the most sense because Chet's hurt. Jabari Smith, I don't think it's going to be like a stat sheet stud in his first year. Same with Jaden Ivey because I think he'll have his uh, his bad games. And I, I, Keegan Murray, I think, is going to finish second in the voting. Um, and like he did here. Which rookie will be the best in five years? Ben Carroll, Chet, Ivey, Smith. Murray, yeah, basically like the top five players that went in the draft. Other receiving votes were Dyson Daniels and Benedict Mathard, who's looked great so far in preseason in some league. Which rookie was the biggest steal at where he was drafted? I love Tari Easton's value. I liked AJ Griffin's, and I really liked, okay, who else was getting votes? Like Malachi Branham went pretty late as well. Christian Brown, I think, will be pretty good. I really wouldn't... Ah. I guess Jalen Duran was a steal because you would think he was a top 10 pick. I don't think that he will be the best rookie out of these guys here. Like, that went maybe after him. I think I like Tari Eason long term. Uh, that could be maybe me being salty that the Knicks passed up on Duran. But I do like Duran. I just, I don't know. I'm a little wary on how he's going to be. But um, it's a nice that he's on a, a rebuilding team that can afford uh, to let him be inconsistent and struggle throughout his rookie year and i'm gonna pull the leash on him right away yeah i mean they just wanted to throw this question in there or but who's the best international player in the nba Giannis, luka Jokic, basically the top three players in the league and then they had to throw this question in there to get Wemby in this poll of course i'm surprised that <laughs> nicole Miritich was up there as well um or just got like 28 percent defense who is the best defensive player in the nba Giannis one dream on two gobert three so no marcus smarty one deep oil last year who's the best perimeter defender smart one drew holiday two Kawhi three bridges four i actually really like that <laughs> wiggins getting votes all right uh, i'm interested to see how wiggins plays after maybe peaking last year at least in the playoffs who's the best interior defender in the league gobert Giannis, draymond i think draymond does have some competition at three between um him bam at bio joel Embiid, but i still like can agree with that who's the more verse or who's the most versatile defender in the nba Giannis one dream on two bam three i think bridges should maybe have been in that top three but that's just me which is the best defensive team in the nba celtics one warriors two heat three tied with the milwaukee bucks coaches who's the best head coach in the nba eric spostra all right uh pop yeah, I mean, it's towards the end of his career. Taylor Jenkins could maybe get in that top five next year. Still liked Monty Williams a lot. Who, which head coach is the best manager motivator of people? Steve Kerr won, Monty Williams too. Steve Kerr might have uh, his work cut out for him this year. Which head coach makes the best in-game adjustments? Wow, Tyler number one. Yeah, Nick Nurse wasn't in the top five or even received votes as well. Um, which head coach runs the best offense? Steve Kerr won. That makes sense. Chris Finch too, though. Shout out to him. Which head coach has the best defensive team? Spolstra won. I think we can all agree with that. Shout out to Tibbs, though. Side with three. Like the only... Well, him and Brunson were mentioned in this video. Uh, which new or relocated head coach will make the biggest impact on his new team? Ham won. Brown two. Clifford and Charlotte, I'm surprised, got 17% of the votes. I feel like Will Hardy probably should have got more. Uh, who's the best assistant coach in the NBA? Kenny Atkinson won. Charles Lee, I've heard like, really good things about him, but he tied with Kenny. And yeah, Kenny should probably have a head coaching job um, again. Which active player will make the best head coach someday? It's a cool one. Uh, Chris Paul won. Garrett Temple, too. Wow. He must like, like, just stuff we don't hear about. Like, he must be like a great veteran behind the scenes. McCollum, three. I think McCollum would be a good one as well. Miscellaneous, which team is the most fun to watch? Grizzlies won, uh, or Warriors won, excuse me, Grizzlies two. Nets three. Which team has the best home court advantage? Raptors won, Celtics two. Wow, surprised to see the Nuggets up there. I went to a Nuggets game at Ball Arena for the first time last year. It was like a Thursday night game in March. It was Warriors Nuggets. 
I'm surprised to see them up there. Um, I feel like the Knicks would, eh, maybe not. Uh, which team will have the league's most efficient offense this season? Warriors, uh, Bucks, Nuggets. Do like the Nuggets to have a good chance there. Which team's level of success this season is the toughest to predict? Nets. That should be, well, them and the Lakers, yeah, it should just be like 50 50. Which team will have the most promising young core? Cavs. I mean, with that front court and that back court, that makes sense. Which player is the most athletic? John Morant won. It always scares me though when he dunks, man. The way he falls, I just hope. I don't know. He, he maybe kind of dials that back a little bit. Which player is the best pure shooter? I'm surprised. Well, I guess this could be mid-range shooter. It wasn't three-point shooter. Uh, which player is the fastest with the ball? John Moran. I'm glad De'Aaron Fox is still number two because he is really so fast with the ball. And he was in top, our five players that I love this year. Which player is the best at moving without the ball? Curry, one. Clay, two. Okay, Mikel Bridges up there getting some votes. Which player is the best passer? Yeah, this was LeBron for so long, and he's not even in the top three anymore. Which player is the best leader? Chris Paul, one. Curry, two. LeBron, three. Giannis, four. Lillard, five. And you have Draymond and Jimmy Butler. Who is the most versatile player in the NBA? Giannis, one. Okay. Uh, which player is the best basketball IQ? I'm so cool with LeBron being up there. Jokic, I'm surprised. Chris Paul is ahead. I guess Luka still can make some mistakes here and there uh which player would you want to get a shot with the game on the line yeah steph i think kd is still there even though he had a bad playoff series against the celtics and what rule regarding play schedule draft lottery need most needs to change that's actually a pretty cool one coaches challenge automatic reviews so including keeping challenge if successful got 70 percent of the votes free agency before the draft i want that really badly that was that's a thing in the nfl i think it should be a thing here. Uh, mandatory draft medical information. That's, I mean, for them. Lottery odds, flatten or wheel proposal. Like a spin the wheel. What? <laughs> that's just good teams that want that. Or teams that finish, like, at 14. Um, that's probably, like, the Kings said that. Or maybe the Knicks. That are in, like, purgatory. Playoff format include no play-in if 9 10 seed plays too far back. I, I think so. I think so. I kind of want less playoff teams, not more. Elam ending. I like it. It's cool. I don't think it'll ever be a thing just because of the historic aspect. More leeway for defense. I agree. And schedule wants to be changed. All right. That is a really cool article to kind of go through. Because these guys are the ones making the moves, making the trades, um, picking the head coaches and stuff. So it is cool to see what they think behind the scenes. Let me know what you guys think of the article down below. Drop a like if you did enjoy. I love you guys. And I'll catch you on the next one.